Well, he's finally come and done it. Beta O'Rourke finally let the mask slip. And that is, he is going to come to your house and seize your private property protected under the Second Amendment. You see, Beto O'Rourke has repeatedly called for seizing AR-15s and AKs, etc. Beto has also made nonsensical statements where he's like, we're not talking about shotguns or handguns. These are weapons designed for war. But if, hold on. No, 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 they're not, Beto. You have no idea what you're talking about, and you are the worst. You're absolute worst. I will say, during the debate... I'm very proud of my joke. I said, I like it when Beto, when they ask Beto questions, because then I can run to the kitchen and grab snacks. That's how little I care about what you have to say, because you're an insane person who's trying to be bombastic. Everybody knows it. I was watching, I, I, it was like, uh, first of all, here's, this is, I, got, I got a better story for you. So, so we have this. Beto finally said, law enforcement will show up to your house. You'll get a visit from law enforcement. Fine. But surprisingly, CNN host Allison Camarota pressed Beto O'Rourke and made him look like the fool he is. But even better than that, I was watching, I believe it was a Fox News segment, where someone pointed out exactly what I was saying the other day, that Beto is trying to be bombastic and say the most insane, nonsensical things possible, like, we're going to strip tax-exempt status from churches. No, dude, that's called the First Amendment. We're going to come and take away all your guns. No, dude, that's called the Second Amendment. And Beto then says, we're not talking about handguns and shotguns. Did you even read the law that's been promos promoted? These, 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 you know what, Beto? You're either dumb as a box of rocks or you're just a really bad person. And I'm going to have to go with the latter. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend like Beto's the smartest guy in the world. But, but seriously, he is misleading people. The assault weapons ban would include many handguns. I think it may have been revised. Fact check me on this one. But I did a big thing about it before where they're talking about the rules on assault guns are so broad that it would ban handguns too, except for like revolvers. So yeah, Beto, you're wrong. They're talking about showing up to your house and taking everything. Okay, almost everything. I'm being a little hyperbolic. But here was the, the epic slam dunk. CNN host Allison Camarota rips into Beto O'Rourke gun plan. I did not see this coming from CNN of all places. Beto was asked, how will you, well, actually, let me just read this because you're going to love it. And you're going you're gonna to say, CNN did that? Really? Oh, yeah, CNN did that. Check us out. CNN Morning Anchor, Allison Camarota, press 2020 presidential candidate Beto O'Rourke, and how he plans on implementing his gun confiscation proposal. We now know he's going to go to your house. But let's read. O'Rourke, who faced similar criticisms from fellow presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg during Tuesday's Democratic presidential primary debate, was interviewed on CNN the following morning by Camarota. Uh, this was, uh, I believe this was this, this morning. Quote, how do you plan to get assault weapons away from people who don't want to give them up? The host asked on Wednesday. And Beto then says, as with any law in this country, we would expect our fellow Americans to follow the law. The former Texas representative echoed his answer from the debate. We're a nation of laws and no person is above the law, no matter how much they may disagree with a given law. This is the right thing to do. And I fully expect my fellow Americans to follow the law. He went on to bring up Australia's ban of automatic and semi-automatic rifles and shotguns, which went into effect after a mass shooting in Port Arthur, Tasmania that left 35 people dead in 96. And I will also stress, Australia has substantially less firearms and substantially less people. But I digress. Let's read on. And here's the quote, the slam dunk from CNN. Seriously, quote, you expect mass shooters to follow the law? Camarota pushed back. Congressman, Mass shooters, by definition, they don't follow the law, followed by stunned silence from Beto O'Rourke. Now, now I'll be real. It's a little hyperbolic. Many people try playing this game, but in reality, it wasn't stunned silence. It was just satellite delay. As much as we would like to pretend that Beto was like, I can't answer the question. What do I do? And that is, and no, it's, it's a satellite delay of a few seconds. But, uh, but I think it's funny to say. So, so no, no, no. I was just being hyperbolic. But we, we do see... Um, or I should say I was exaggerating. There, there, are so, there are oftentimes I've seen people do this with Beto and others where they're like shocked. They couldn't re respond quickly enough. It's like, no, it's because they're not using Skype. It's because they're using satellite feeds with massive latency. Uh, Beto did have a, you know, moderate response. But let's be real. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do a takedown of, of what Beto's been claiming because Beto has no idea what he's talking about or he's lying to you. O'Rourke responded by reiterating his claim that people will follow the law but Cam Rota did not relent. The former congressman continued, there are so many instances where the proposals that we've made 
Whether it is a universal background check or a red flag law or ending the sale of weapons of war or buying those that are out there back would have stopped many of the shootings we've seen in a country that loses 40,000 people a year to gun violence. Would it stop every single shooting? No, but that should not, but, but that should be no excuse for not taking action now while we have the opportunity to do the right thing. In another interview Wednesday morning, O'Rourke admitted that law enforcement officials would likely visit AR-15 owners who refuse to turn in their guns under his plan. I'd like to stop real quick and tell you a quick story before I get into tearing down Beto O'Rourke's stupid comments and talking about why he's an awful, awful human being who should not be allowed at these debates. There was an older gentleman who expressed something at a dinner with his family. And this is a true story. And he said something that one, I believe it was his sister or someone uh, thought was alarming. So they called the police. I believe this was Maryland. The police responded under red flag laws to seize his firearms. Well, this gentleman, not knowing who was coming to his door, answered the door with his firearm. And when the police entered the door, he refused to give, give up his weapons because he has a constitutional right. And you know what happened? He was shot and killed. Because I'll tell you this right now. If you think gun owners will act in defiance of the Constitution because you passed a red flag law, I got you got another thing coming, Beto. People will follow the law like that guy did. No, that guy said when an unjust law is brought to, you know, to my door, then he will respond in an unjust way or, or, or whatever. I can't remember what the saying is, but it's basically like when you try and pass a law that is unjust, don't be surprised when people defy that law. And if the Constitution says that right shall not be infringed and you show up to a person's house without warning and they don't know why you say, give us your weapon, don't be surprised. And they say, never going to happen. So, Beto, why don't you take a look at what's actually happened in this country and maybe take a step back and realize you were wrong? More importantly, though, I can look at what he said about seizing weapons. I can we can look at what he said about credit card companies cutting off legal businesses, calling on massive multinational corporations to do his bidding. Beto is an evil, sick, disgusting person. He is saying these things to get attention. OK, he knows. But here's the funniest part. It ain't working. And that's the worst part of it. He is a slimy loser. And I, I, I'll be you, you guys know I rarely insult people. But Beto, I see as being one of the most twisted and disgusting individuals. He is capitalizing off of mass shootings and misrepresenting what's actually going on to benefit himself to get press attention on a debate stage that is slime, that is complete disgusting crust that grows on the underseat of a bus stop seat. He is an evil, disgusting individual. He is capitalizing off of the hurt, off of the victims. He is misrepresenting what's being said. He is not addressing the actual issues. And he is just saying the most insane, bombastic things possible to get attention. You normally don't see me this angry. But let me tell you something, Beto. When you talk about the 40,000 people a year to gun violence, what he's not telling you is that very, there, a, a, a tiny, tiny fraction of that has anything to do with AR-15s. He's not telling you that AR-15s are not weapons of war. They are basically standard semi-auto rifles that exist in many forms in many ways. And that's why you'll often hear people in the news say AR-15 style rifle. I'm not a gun person. I can say that. But I'll tell you this, those 40,000, most of which suicide, tragedy. It's just people taking the weapon and ending their own life. And more importantly, you want to play this game by citing these people who lost their lives to push your insane agenda of going door to door and confiscating something protected under the Second Amendment? You already have many restrictions on many of our constitutional rights. There are speech restrictions. I, I don't completely disagree. There are restrictions on certain weapons. Honestly, I don't completely disagree. I am a rather, you know, leaning to the left person on this issue. But you know what I do disagree with? The ends justifying the means. Lying and deceit. You know what I would say to you? Listen. There's a reason why we ban, for the most part, belt-fed, high-capacity, 50-caliber, whatever, right? I don't mean all in one. I mean, <laughs> breaking those apart. Um, we don't ban all 50-caliber, actually. There's a lot of weapons you can buy. And, and admittedly, um, you can actually buy belt-fed under, I believe it's the National Firearms Act. You can get grandfathered in weapons and stuff like that. So there are restrictions. I understand them. I disagree with, with some. I agree with, with, with some. The point is, if I give you a good reason... And you understand that reason why we're going to implement something. That's how we move forward as a country. If people in this country, the majority polled, believe that background checks make sense, then perhaps we go with background checks. I mean, look, if most people like the majority, fine. Red flag laws, on the other hand, are very, very controversial and misunderstood. 
And, and Beto, wanting to get his agenda passed, has even threatened to use monopolistic authoritarian tactics using major corporations. This dude is sick. He is, th this is the, the, as far authoritarian as you can go. Now look, for me, I'm on the libertarian, libertarian spectrum. That means there's left and right libertarian. You can be, believe it or not, libertarian communist really does exist. A lot of people are like, that's not true. That's not a thing because they think libertarian. And in, in the United States, we have the libertarian party. It's the big L. But I'll tell you an, an easy example. Libertarian communism is like 12 hippies on a farm. It's the easiest way to explain it. They're sitting around and, and Jim goes, oh, hey, I grew a bunch of watermelons. Do you guys want some? Oh, thanks, Jim. And then someone else says like, would, would someone mind washing the ditches while I go walk the dog? Oh, I'll do it. That's how easy it is to have libertarian communism. Because at any point, you can just leave. The problem is you can't scale that up. So most people don't see that. They, they ignore it because in, in reality, it can't, it's not scalable. I mean, it, it's, it is to an extent. Beto O'Rourke is the complete other end. He is the complete, you cannot go further authoritarian than calling on massive tech finance monopolies like MasterCard and Visa to suspend a cons constitutional right that is literally as authoritarian as it comes. This is why I think Beto is evil, because he's not doing it because he believes in it. He's doing it to exploit the hurt and pain people are feeling with lies to gain political power. This is a man who should never be allowed anywhere near a ballot box or whatever. What, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm done. I got another segment coming up in a few minutes. I'll see you all shortly.